Yeah, absolutely. So um, welcome everyone to today's Power Apps for Big Kids and Little Kids session. Um, this session is being run by Rory Neary and his great team, Peter, Leo and Robin. And we're joined by Beth and Michelle as well, who will be delivering today's session. Um, so hope you enjoy it. And Rory, um, if you want to get started and kick it off, that would be great. Fantastic. OK, so hi, everyone. We are now on to session number four and things are moving on a stage. I'm going to sort of see if I can show my face at this point in time. So, yeah, um, it's been very interesting so far to have done the power apps for big kids and little kids. There seems to be within the community enough interest for uh, for us to continue doing this. Uh, and I'm now going to move through what we call the agenda for for today. So I'm just going to move on to the the, the, the steps that we're going to take today. Um, and my dog is barking in the background just to help out. Um, so first of all, um, welcome everyone. We've done that bit. We are also going to do the usual what is Power Apps and why learn Power Apps. And that's going to be done by Peter today. Um, Oh, this is a mysterious, uh, the mysteries of Rory and um, and uh, um, and PowerPoint here. We are going to do Ham Hangman Revisited. Beth is going to do us five minutes to wow, and it's a really special five minutes to wow session uh, because we are doing it uh, based around sign language, and we put a bit of work in the background uh, to, to do that. Um, we will do a session three recap. Uh, in the middle there. Um, we've got a lesson time, which is going to be done by um, by Peter. And um, and we have got Michelle and she's going to be doing us the rock, paper, scissors game. Uh, finally, we're going to talk about the website resources that we've got. And there's a survey at the end and we'll do a little recap. And finally, the next session that we will be doing will be in four weeks time on Tuesday, the 14th of July. So that's fantastic. Um, I am going to very shortly hand over to Peter if you're able to jump in, Peter, um, to give you a chance to to uh, get yourself ready so you can talk about why it is we're actually uh, doing this at all. I'm just going to I'm going to stop sharing. You can um, and you can share. That's it. We're good. We're good to go. Yeah. Peter. Um, I basically don't need any, anything to share. I basically start off with um, why power apps. Um, for me personally, why power apps means um, a lot of people talk about less code, more power. And that's exactly what it is. It's uh, rather than doing lots of development in my daily job, I, I create software. Um, Ten years ago, I would do lots of coding and I would create something that wasn't half as good as what Power Apps can do today. I can now do it in a lot less time. That's for me personally. But this is Power Apps for kids. So, with now is the important thing is why should kids learn it? Well, one of the important things is when you become a big kid, you will use it potentially in your job. And isn't that really important too? In your job, you can use the skills that you learn today. And that's such a big step forwards. It means that you can, well, but by the time you're 15, you can already start working. You can already do your job. You don't need to go to school. And, yes, you do need to go to school. <laughs> Sorry, Robin, you still do have to go to school. Sometimes. Oh, come on. But it, it, it exactly is, is the point where you can do your jobs. You can even create your own little games, like Robin and Leo can can tell you. They've been creating games for the last couple of months, and they're creating one game after the other. And when they've finished one game, they look around and go, hey, I can create that as well as an app. And there is so much stuff you can do with Power Apps. And that, to me, is one of the important things. That is why we should learn Power Apps. Um, we should learn Power Apps because it's easy. And you can make whatever you like. Because isn't it nice that if you look at, for example, something like Word, you, you use Word, but you can't make Word, can you? But you can create things that you can use. So like Leo said uh, earlier, um, 
he needed an, an, an app to select his cuddly toy for uh, tonight. So what did he do? He created an app to select the cuddly toy, creates 10 photos of lots of different cuddly toys, and uses it. Don't you, Leo? Yeah. And how long did it take you? Uh, only about half an hour or so. See, create an app in half an hour. That's why we learn Power Apps. How long did it take you, Robin? Similar, wasn't it? Yep. Yep. It took me so, slightly longer, but it's still uh, around the same time. But that's fine because the thing it's is, it's very that fun. Once you created an app, you can enhance that app and you can make it better. Mm -hmm. And you, it's never finished. And that's okay. exactly what uh, what you should do. So, and um, what about parents? Is it just for children? Power Apps. Parents use it at their work. Um, there are lots of big stories about people that started with Power Apps just because they enjoyed Power Apps or they suddenly bumped into Power Apps and they had a problem and they wanted to solve the problem. And they use Power Apps to do so. And that's exactly why parents should learn Power Apps as well, maybe. And of course, they might just create a game for themselves. Brilliant. So what a business app. That's not that's the case. Not to create business apps with them. <laughs> exactly, exactly, and that's where it started. But the fact is, it's a brilliant multimedia tool uh, for the rest of us to use. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to um, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, I'm just uh, and I'm going to show the what the website looks like at the moment, so that if you want to continue your learning, you know um, you know what to do. So I'm just going to share my screen now. Um, here I am. Can everyone see the screen at this point? No. Uh, it's on its way yep. yep. Just coming in. OK, so this is the powerappsforkids.com website. I'm not going to go through all the bits of it. Um, you can have a look around yourself. The bit that I'm going to refer to you to at the moment is the Content Explorer. So if you click on the Content Explorer, it'll take you off to a Power BI report. It just doesn't really matter what it is. It's a Power BI report. But what you can do then is you can select on the sort of event that we've been doing and you can select maybe a project. And once you've selected your that you want projects, you can choose between the different projects that there are. And so gradually everything is being filtered down. So it's a little bit slow at the moment. So I'm just kind of waiting for it to, to wake up um, click on there. Good. So it's looking at the projects and when and then I can select project number one, which was Hangman for Kids. And that was last time session. And what you can see here, there's lots and lots of different things that we did. You can see the actual global variables um, part of that that Peter did last time. And you can also reach out to um, to the actual app itself and there's things on the length function so you can actually see the files so you may go to different places so this one here will take you off to YouTube to see the session that uh, Peter did but other ones will actually take you to some of the files themselves so this is this is actually an app and you can download the app now. Everything's going a little bit slow because we've got a lot of things going on at the moment. But if you do land on there, you can hit the download and then get it onto your computer. Um, so you can see YouTube is just firing up there. And um, so at this point, I am going to hand back because I think that um, that the Veenstra family did their own version of um, of Hangman, and they're just going to do a little demonstration um, of that. We certainly did. Um, so, Robin, why don't you uh, get the browser up and then share the sc our screen? The screen yep. to screen. this one. Oh, you can, to can, I just, can I just chip in there? Um, for any of the people that aren't presenters, um, if they switch off their cameras, not because we don't like you or anything, but we will be putting this video onto YouTube and uh, and obviously I'll be concerned about putting other people's children onto YouTube. So if you can turn off your camera, then that would be great, please. Um, so, Peter, I'll hand back to you. Yeah, OK, uh, I'll quickly share the screen over here. And I've got a browser. There we go. Yes. So basically, 
what uh, Robin did over here, and Leo did, did, did created a very similar app as well, uh, but we can only show one at a time. Um, so let me quickly get some of the Teams bits out of the way. Um, okay, so basically what, uh, what we did over here, Robin, what did he create as, as new, what Laura didn't create in the app? Um, well, first thing... Uh, let, should I first explain what Laura, Laura did probably? Okay. Laura basically created a hangman game. So that means that there's a word and we have to guess it. So you can put your guesses in the box and you press the guess button. And then if you guess the right letter, it, that letter will appear. Then what we thought is basically, well, we wanted a little hangman picture. Uh, Laura didn't put it in uh, last time, but we didn't really like a hangman. So what did you like, Robin? Um, I have always liked cows. So what we did was we created 10 images of, so we got one image of a cow. Yeah. Then we deleted parts of the image to create 10 different steps of the, of the image. Yep. So here, I have already set it before everything up before everything. Before. Watch that, that tail of that cow. Watch the tail of that cow, because okay. in a minute it is going to leave and you will not be able click. to see it. Go and click on oh, it. It's there. gone. The, the, the cow has lost its tail. And by the time you've lost the cow, what have you then lost, Robin? You've lost the game. Oh, how many times have you, have you got? You've got 10 wrong guesses. Oh, okay. Not 10 guesses. Uh -huh. You've got 10 wrong guesses. Also, what I created, as well as a nice blue background, was at the bottom, below the cow, I created a account so you can see how many guesses you've made and how many wrong guesses you've made ah. so you uh, so you know how far you are as well as the picture you can also see how far you are from losing the game oh that's good Brilliant. okay and so, you can also see that the previous guesses i think so you can see that you've guessed an e yep. so why don't we guess another letter or so a d oh it didn't, the, the, the cow lost its mouth, hasn't it? Yep. Can you do a right one, Robin? Okay. And oh, now it comes ah. up. The so, other thing that we did was that we put them all into capital letters so instead of just lowercase letters. Yeah, so it means that you can type whatever you like. You can type a lowercase letter and it will turn it into an uppercase letter. Yep. Is that what you mean? Yes. Good, good. And I've noticed that your cursor over there is nicely appearing in that box all the time. Yes, we put it in there so that otherwise you would, it would take a lot longer and when you guess afterwards, you would, so you make your guess, then and it clears it nicely out and it goes it back to the box. It clears it out and it goes back to the box, otherwise oh, it wouldn't have gone back to the box, so you would have had to click on the box and then type oh, in your letter. Oh, that's a very small little uh, change, but it's very useful, isn't it? Yeah. So, do we want to make any guesses what the other letters should be? Rory, what do you think we should go for? Ah, uh, well, it's not going to be another R, is it? I thought it could be Rory then. Um, oh, yeah, it could be. So we do another R? No, it can't no, be. We could, no, do, but, no, we we no, could do another R. You no, never it know. Work. It shouldn't work. I might not have enabled that you can have more than one letter in a go. Go on, to put another R in. Shouldn't it be a capital R? Or does it matter? Oh, it turns it into a capital. Does Can it? You see okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it another okay. R? R, 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 um, um, H. A H. H. Yeah. I don't know what this is going to be. I don't know either. It's got to be. It's got to be. Now lost his eyes. Beth, have you got a guess for us? L. Nice. It's now lost its oh, we're, we're losing loads of cow here. <laughs> you're, you're killing it massively. I think you want oh, to no, the poor cow. No, it's you've got four, four, four pieces of cow left. Four pieces left. Anyone else? <laughs> I Anyone think it's an else? X. I can't. X? Yeah, an X. X. This is a typical X word. <laughs> it's not an X. Oh, <laughs> 
Why can't it be just Rory? That would have been simple. <laughs> yeah, would, be, wouldn't it? would you like <laughs> to put a Y in? Oh, why? Why? Yeah, why? Yeah. No. A, no. A, no. A, oh. How about you? A, can I? Can I? Nope, no A. Nope. Oh, we're on our last chance. Oh, no. I think we're close to the next a bit of Robin change as well. Yep. So, try again, Robin. Um, What's left to say we do? Can we do an K? K. We haven't had a K yet, have we? No, it could be rocks. Uh, uh, Game over. Oh, no. Game over. Uh, it, it could have been a K because it could have been rocks. It could have been. Yeah. yeah. So, but what I uh, so what I made is once you had done it, I then made there be two more different screens. Yeah. That would then, um, so depending on whether you had won or lost, you would then be navigated to one of them. Yeah. Okay. And I drew, and I drew a picture. Yeah. Game over, or you won. I think the winner one was. Do you want to see what that looks like? If you go to new game, ah, the word was Robin. My name. Oh wow! I should have. I should have known that one. Yeah. Yes. We. Did. <laughs> if anybody had been watching from the previous episode, they should have guessed because that's what it was in the previous episode as well. <laughs> so I wasn't listening. I obviously don't watch. Can, can you just stop there? Can, can you just hold on? Hold on. Yeah. You know that thing where it refocuses. Is it is it the set focus thing? When you click on there, does it do yeah. set focus? Yeah. Can yeah. you can you hit can you hit the X button on there so that we can look at the code? Oh, we can do. Go and take a little X from the top. Here we are. Yeah. Okay. Good so guess, you, you guys using guess. Guess. yeah. Here you we guys are. use so click on the guess thing and yep, blah, 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 blah. But, um, make it big. Just yeah, it changed it a little bit. Yeah. It's on the right. Drag it yeah, down. I'm doing yeah. it. Okay, and it's there's you're awesome. using the, the set bottom, focus. Set focus guess. Yep. That's really clever. So that's the yep. thing that gets us back to the actual um, text input field, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but it's a really good thing to be able to do because yep. it, you know, it means you can play for longer. Fantastic. Yep. It's not an. It's not a. Um, it's not a big thing to do. Yeah. But it's just that little teeny thing that makes it. A lot better and a lot easier to play. Yeah, and did you and did you make all of the little pictures yourselves? Um, yes. What so we you... did is we got our cow. Yeah. And then we, uh, using a uh, program, we yeah. took away little bits, bits. of the cow, yeah. so you uh, so you can see. Uh, by the different pictures. Yeah. It is the. It looks like it's the same cow as the previous one. Yeah. Just I've took. Uh, just I've grabbed uh, one and, th and threw it away. You want, thrown it into the pit. Do you want to click so If you click on the image over there, the picture of the cow. Yep. If you now look at the top, all the pictures are called cow and then a number, aren't they? Yes. Uh, and we're looking at the number uh, yeah. of wrongs. Yeah. And I'm creating the, we're selecting the right image. Yes. It's a little bit complicated stuff at the top over there. Yep, but so, what we're doing is we're just creating a number and connecting that to the uh, the file of the image. Yeah. So, yes. And that's just the place on the internet where you've got a bunch of images. No, that is Power no, Apps. That is Power Apps gives a kind of like a unique name to uh -huh. every single picture. Uh -huh. And that's what they're like. Okay. Actually, it's just pointing at the images immediately. Uh -huh. oh. You can find all the images back. Yeah. Cow one up to ten. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. And as long as you name your images correctly, it, uh -huh. it does it extremely well. Yeah. That's quite clever. I might well, have to. Yeah. You'll have to explain that to me one day. Um, okay, so well, that was really that was really interesting. Yep. Um, boys, are you are you okay for us to move on to the next yep. part of yep. the session? So and so, you guys will need to stop sharing your screen now.
Yep, yeah. we're all on our Thank way you. and That's trying funny. to sort yeah. things out. Yeah. Brilliant. We've stopped sharing. You're full screen. Brilliant. So in the next part of the session, we've got something called five minutes to wow. So I had this idea that in order to, I'm going to say, impress people about Power Apps, I thought it'd be really good if you could show them literally you build in something really small, but in five minutes. So what I'm going to do is, are you there, Beth? Yeah, yeah. So, um, if you want to start sharing your screen and I'll start talking while you start sharing your screen. We've got Beth here. Beth, how many apps have you built so far? Uh, none. This would be, yeah, none. This would be my first one. This is your first ever app? Okay. Yep. Um, and you're going to demonstrate building an app in five minutes? Yeah. And this was something that we did together. So you might as well might want to start on click on Power Apps to start with just to because uh, it sometimes takes a while to, to jump through. So I'm going to hand over any second now in to Beth. Now, Beth, I assume that you must be some kind of mathematician to be able to do something like this. Um, what's your background? Uh, not a mathematician. I'm currently at uni, but I'm not studying maths. So this uh, was, yeah, surprisingly easy, to be honest. And, and what are you studying then? It must be like computer science or um, chemistry? Uh, no, I'm studying psychology. So quite different, but this is still really applicable to stuff like that I'm studying. So. OK, well, I yeah. hand over the floor to you, Beth, to build us an app. OK, so we had this idea to build an app based on sign language where. Um, should I like introduce it or just show building it? Just well, you can say why we're doing this and what we were, you know, a little bit about what we were trying to achieve and um, be don't need to, you know, it's a sign language app. Yeah, yeah, just to kind of um, improve kind of accessibility to learning sign language, even just at basic level. Um, but yeah, so I'll start by creating a new app from blank. So I'll just call it. Can you see my screen? OK, uh, I can see your screen fine. Cool. So so in actual fact, Beth has never done the building of this app, certainly you know, from scratch in this way before. Um, mm -hmm. So Bethany was able to do the um, was able to do the sign language and and then I said, oh, this would be a really cool idea for us to be able to have an app which enables us to learn sign language. So we're kind of about a minute and a half in now. What are you going to do next, uh, Beth? So I'm going to put in a text input because we want to decide what we want to say in sign language. So okay. I'm just going to do that. And I'll make that blank because we want to decide what we want to say in sign language. So an example, I'm going to tie this in. Brilliant. Um, and we have to get the letters of this in sign language. So um, you yeah. Might to yeah, I want to make your screen a teeny bit big. You know that bit at the bottom there? You can drag yeah. the slider at the bottom a tiny bit over. That's okay. good. Like that. Yeah. OK, I'm going to insert a gallery. So we've got somewhere to put the images. So uh, just so you know, we have we have done gifts of every single letter. Well, only 26 letters, but all the letters in the English language. Right, so I'm going to make this. And, what we're, trying to do, what, and we're trying to spell out hello world in sign language. So I'm going to split the gallery. And there we go. Uh, uh. 
So I'll just stop people here. The yeah. only thing that we're doing that's complicated here is we're using the split function. And what that does is it splits what you have in front of you into um, into a gallery, essentially. So it splits every word and just imagine taking a word that says hello world going across. And just imagine it going down. And that's what uh, Bethany's done here. So I'm just going to put in a label so we've got the letters out in front of us so you can see the hello world is out spread out across the page um brilliant okay you can just about see it on the page there should i go a little bit bigger i think on yeah yeah you can go go onto the size click on the letter h uh and then where it says size ooh, i don't know where it says size um no don't worry about the size of it it'd be fine and what okay. i would do is is do the word in capitals we won't worry about the capitals thing just do hello okay hello world like that okay so now we just need to put in the gifts of the letter so i'm going to go so when we filmed the um filmed for the gifts Rory sent me a link to them so I'm just going to go to that and download the link so you just need to copy the bit at the top there I'm gonna click on that put that in oh there. yes you're right just download yeah uh, I'm going to insert an image taking its time. Um, all right, I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. Right, so we can see the letter. Right, and then I'm going to put the link from the download of the GIF in here. And should get a load of A's. So to change to the hello world letters that we want. going to do uh, um, oh. and this item oh. and get rid of the A because otherwise they're all going to be A's and that should get us hello world so do you so, want to put on go on full screen now yeah so the idea of this being that in this top box we can type any word that we want and it will spell out in the sign language letters so if i type we're doing it in caps in capitals because we've done the letters all in capitals anyway so if i type rory then we can spell out anything we want in sign language yeah and it's okay, just think? come through on my screen there what did you think of that robin wow <laughs> what do you think, Leo? Wow, it's really amazing. So, yeah, I, I'm really, really impressed with that, Beth, because I put Beth on the spot to say, hey, Beth, do you think you could do this? Because I thought that it would be more, I'm going to say, impressive to show that somebody who doesn't do computer science but does have skills can use this to create something that is special that they couldn't have done in any other way and me and bethany are cooking up a little sign language app project where we're going to take this a little bit further and have other words like for example hello is like a kind of wave and and mm. so on. so so that we can perhaps help all organizations just give them a real simple app where they can learn a bit of sign language but i am conscious of time now so thank you so much beth uh, beth um and now uh, i am going to hand over um if it's possible uh to michelle and uh, michelle are you there yes i'm here so rory, rory first to shuffle things still 
Oh, oh dear. So you might have to do this quite quickly. <laughs> I will do it very this? quickly. OK, so um, Peter, we're going to use do a real quick. Um, uh, this is a Peter demonstrating the shuffle function because Michelle will be using the shuffle function later on. And this is a real quick demonstration of that. Yeah, basically I'm taking only two minutes, but it introduces something that Michelle is doing and it basically helps if we can um, can create all these functions that we're using in a very short, quick description. First, what is shuffling? Well, basically, I've got a packet of cards over here and I've got them nicely in order. And I shuffle them and now they're not in order anymore. And one of the problems is I can't unshuffle, can I? I mean, you can shuffle until you're blue in the face, but <laughs> that you can't unshuffle it. So that's exactly what uh, what uh, what um, uh, it does in Power Apps. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen over here and I'm going to talk about the shuffle function. Well, I couldn't make much of a presentation about this. I've got a shuffle function and all it does is it takes a collection of data, my cards. I've got uh, 50 odd cards over here and I'm going to shuffle them. And that's all it does. So I'm going to give you an example. Uh, let's go and play over here. So let me go into play mode over here. I, I've written over here, Power Apps for Kids. I thought, let's use a useful word over here. I click on the shuffle. And over there, I've got now an anagram of Power Apps for Kids. And now we solve it. I can't unshuffle it. And that's exactly what it does. This is what the shuffle function does. It takes something. And then it's a collection of things. In this case, a collection of letters. It shuffles and then it will present it somewhere if you wanted to present it. So let's have a quick look at this, uh, what this uh, button does over here. Uh, stop it there. You can see over here, there's a shuffle function over there. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking the text from this input box over here, text input dot text, and then I'm splitting it up into separate letters because Power Apps for Kids is a whole word. Splitting it up into separate letters, Splitting it by nothing, which means every letter, and then I'm shuffling it. And then what I'm doing is I'm setting a collection called call letters and using the uh, clear collect. But hey, the clear collect function is something for the next time. So that's the shuffle function for today. So I think we're ready for Michelle to demo her app. Fantastic. Thanks for that, uh, Peter. Okay. okay. Over to Michelle. Thank you, Peter, for uh, for uh, this describing uh, describe how how to use the shuffle function. You're welcome. And um, I see I I have uh, twenty five minutes left, so no, there was, it's um, okay. Just, just do it in the first time. First of all, there, there was a, a little mistake. Um, we joined another link, and so there are a few uh, people joining another link, a Teams link. So there was a little uh, confusing about that. Sorry for that. Uh, anyway, we are now in the good, uh, in the right team. So uh, let me share my screen, and then um, I can start my uh, my presentation. I have um, prepared a, a paper, rock, and scissor game, and you can all see my screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, a little bit in introduction about myself. I'm a Microsoft uh, 365 uh, consultant, and I'm focusing. My focus is on on uh, Microsoft Teams, Power Apps, and uh, Power Automate. And uh, also, I do some user adoptions and I give trainings uh, to uh, to users. And if possible, I also speak on events. And um, you see here my uh, LinkedIn and my uh, Twitter profile, so you can uh, we can uh, get connected if there are any questions. Um, I uh, when I start building an app, I uh, normally have few steps. Uh, first step, I uh, you have to uh, think about an idea and maybe do some prototyping. And uh, I, I'm 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 a front end person, so I will collect some images and do some research sources, uh, etc. Um, for the people who are new here uh, for uh, Power Apps for Kids, um, uh, you should look, uh, watch back uh, the session two and session three because I've learned much from uh, from Leo and Robin. Um, 
and it uh, I, I start thinking oh it can be a, a game can be very simple so um, my target is to to build an app um, that um, it's easy to understand and um, uh, and I hope after this session uh, like Warren or Leo can uh, build this app uh, also so um, first step um, you have an idea and the second step uh, create the app uh, insert the images and also add the logics into um, the power app um, thereafter you have some testing you do some testing and uh, if uh, it's needed you can add new uh, new features or uh, adjust a little bit um, and maybe some nice to have uh, features like uh, adding sounds or uh, images and of course uh, have a lot of fun so um here are the little bit descriptions. Um, uh, if you have paper, rock, and uh, and, uh, and scissors, then um, uh, you have yourself as as a rock, and then the opponent uh, can throw something like a paper or a scissor, and then you have an outcome. The outcome: you will lose the game, you will have draw, or you will uh, uh, win the the game. So uh, this uh, a little bit in description about the logic. And uh, in the app itself, I use uh, some functions like set to set the variables. Uh, if functions, I do a, lit a lot of if statements to do the logics. Um, and as uh, Peter described, a uh, shuffle. I have a little collection, in this case, a collection of rock, paper, and scissor. I shuffle it, and then I also have a function called first. And first is get the first item of the collection. So, um, and um, if you don't know how to use those functions, um, Rory have uh, uh, um, a little short videos about Power Apps for Kids on YouTube, and then you can watch it and uh, look back. So, um, let's uh, try to build the app from scratch. Um, I have my uh, Power Apps uh, already. Uh, uh, opened and then I create my power apps from scratch. Let's see. Uh, let's say uh, paper. Let's let's give it a name. Paper rock. Most of the time I use the tablet mode is because um, if I use on tablet modes, I uh, I can use it on desktop, on tablet, and also on mobile phones. And it's it's just adjusted the size for me. I'm not sure you all um, can do it. Um, if there are any questions, just let me know. Uh, so I just um, start my uh, my uh, my app from scratch. Uh, first of all. I have collected some uh, images, like a background image, a draw, uh, paper, scissors, and a uh, rock, um, and some uh, elements like you win, you draw, or you lose the game. So um, I just add in all the images. I go to the media, uh, media tab. I add my images. I select all, open it. So all the images are now in my Power App. I go to my first screen, uh, game screen. Uh, also try to um, uh, uh, rename the elements to a um, name that you can notice because uh, most of the time you will uh, connect to the item itself or the properties. Um, the background image, I use background and I the image position will be tall, so it will show it correctly. Um, first of all, I insert a lot of medias, uh, a, a lot of uh, photos and images to look like more like a game, uh, like a game. So I add other images. Um, have a rock left, let's say a little bit larger. I 
can set the width on the properties. 300 by 300. I copy and paste. Then on the right, I change the rock right. So I have, um, I insert two more labels. Label U and a label documents. I insert the text U so that so that's the user notice um, who which hand is yours and which is the uh, from the opponents. Let's say 40 and I give it a color. I center it so it is can better copy this one. Uh, So a lot so of what, a lot of, of what, what um, um, Stella is doing, doing is, 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 is what, what children, children would do anyway. Do anyway. But one of the one things that is done is to label, label the, uh, the objects really, really well. Wow. And it's something that we should all learn to do. Yeah, because um, every time if you uh, label it well, you can uh, um, link to it when you do some codings. Uh, opponent. Uh, sorry, this is image uh, rock. And this is it's put a little bit larger, so. But you get you, just an uh, uh, adjustment uh, on the images, how you can do. Then I add um, one more one more label. Cop just copy this one. Paste it over here. So, so just choose your hand. And then add three more images, and then we can start doing the coding. So, Michelle, you've done a lot of setup here. You haven't done anything special yet. No, just, 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 just draw a lot of things. Image, so, I got my, um, uh, I got the frame of the app, the game. Brilliant. Uh, rock. Oh, sorry, this is the wrong one. Scissor, and then I missed the rock. Um, rock left. So, so over here I can um, on the home I can align my images. And so my my setup is now ready, and then I uh, can start doing my second uh, step, and that's the coding coding part. Um, when I select on, um, the, I choose my hand like the rock. Uh, I want to add some, do some actions. On this, in this case, I uh, click on on select, and I do a set. set the variable, your hand, and I set it and give it a name that it is rock. Also, um, I also do another function, uh, another set, and this time I say opponent hand, and here comes the shuffle, and I put a collection directly into into this um, set function. Oh. This one will be rock. The second one is uh, paper, and the uh, third one is scissors. Brackets. 
Um, in this case, um, opponent's hand will do a shuffle of this collection, as Peter described, and my collection uh, consists of rock, paper, and scissor. Also, um, before the shuffle, I do a first, it will return the first item of this collection. So, so that bit where it set, set your hand to be rock, um, what's that doing yeah. there? Um, the, the bit, the uh, bit the top where it says set your, oh, I yeah. see. Okay. I set, uh, I, I, I do a variable uh, like rock, mm -hmm. and with this set, I can change the image of the of myself. Okay. I, I, this, my, this myself, and I, I change this to rock. If I choose a uh, paper, then my hand will ch change into a hand. Uh, so I, okay. I, I need a variable to 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 change the uh, uh, so uh, animation. Okay. The effect, the action, and also I have to do this for the opponent hand. It's for the right hand, the right side. So this is an actual kind of a one player game because you're playing against the yeah the, yeah <laughs> right i'm i'm playing um um to the to the computer yeah sure in this case oh um let's uh let's uh when you when you're playing uh trying uh um doing your app i also uh, use sometimes i use a label uh, to show the variables, to check, just to do a check um, if my variable has been set, like so. Yeah. Yes, and then your hand, and I do the same. I'm sorry. I do the same for opponents and then you see you will see directly the results yeah in this case uh because it is in collection i have to call value and hint. and if i play the game now i just only have to set actions on the rock so if i press on the rock you will see um, my hand is set with rock and opponent is rock. If I press it again, I will get paper this time. So you see um, the collection is shuffled every time and then it choose paper, rock or scissor, one of the three. You see the scissor is over here. Okay. Um, just copy and paste the coding of the hand and do the same for the other two. This time, rock paper, because this hand, this is a paper hand and this is a scissor hand. So I have to change this. Scissors. For the opponent hand, it's uh, it's the same uh, same way because um, uh, every time it just shuffled and give returns uh, one of the three. So if try again, this time I have uh, paper. My hand changed to paper, and open hand changed to rock. The same for scissors. It shows the variable is set to scissor, and the opponent hand is changed to scissor. So with those information, I can change my um, the 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 right information to the hand or opponent's hand. Yeah. Um, in this case, here is hard coded rock left, and I put a lot of if statements inside to Michelle. show the right hand. Yes. Michelle, is it worth check us checking with um, the Vinster boys? Are they following what's happening? Is, oh yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think we've seen, although Michelle's worked really, really quickly at this, she hasn't done anything really so far that we've not done before. Um, so mm -hmm. it should be okay. But I'd just be interested to see if the boys are okay with what they've seen. Robin, can you build this? Yeah. Leah, I can you build this? Yeah. I think I can build it quite easily. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. well done. 
Okay, maybe it's almost time. So I shall I uh, show the results? Maybe uh, how it looks like? No, no, keep going. I, I think you're doing brilliant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do here uh, if statements on the image. Then I um, start doing some logic. So I said if my hand is rock, then show the image rock left. Ah, yeah. I do the same for um, paper. Oh, and then show the paper left. Yeah, and the last one will be scissor. So you've got left-handed and right-handed images. Yes. And that and that's a really nice touch. Yeah, so the, the left will be uh, my uh, your hand uh, variables, and on the right side, it will be opponent's hands. Yeah. So if I try it, it will just change into rock, paper, or scissor. Sure. Right. So, can Robin and Leo follow this? Yeah, that's still good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yep, yep we're okay. following this quite well. I was just explaining to them that you can do in one if statement, you can have multiple conditions in there and multiple results. So like you're doing over here, you've got that opponent hand equals rock. That's one condition. And opponent hand equals paper is another condition. And you've got three results as well. Leo basically asked, where's the else? Well, or where's the set? There's lots of else. There's lots yeah. of ifs all in one if command, which yeah. is very good, isn't it? Yes. Very advanced, yet not advanced and easy to keep up with. Yeah, it's easy. Yet to... it's something new. Yeah, yeah I try to um, to use it as simple as possible, so it's it's easy to follow for the for the new for the new ones. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. So, um. Yeah, and here I got some interactions. Just because I have to do some sets, I got my interactions. And the last part is to show um, if I win this game, or if we have a draw result, or um, I lose. Sure. And actually, that's uh, almost the same. But um, I do a comparison with uh, the results of both parts. Sure. Put an image over here. Uh, let's say I set them to um, you win. And then um, also uh, on uh, the image part, I set here a lot of if statements with comparisons. So if your hand is rock n, a double um, double n sign, uh, opponent hand dot value is also a rock, then show me the image uh, draw because we rock and rock we will have draw game just copy and paste in the, a little bit if we have rock and we have paper will i win or lose this game rock and paper then i will lose game logic rock and scissors then i win so that, a ref that reference is actually a reference to an image rather than a reference to a kind of global variable and and so on yeah it's just um i just on, i only have uh, do a comparison with rock so i just press on the ro rock uh, and you see 
uh, rock and rock will give the result of a draw game. Mm. The same if I rock and opponent hand is a scissor, then I win. And the same will um, when I lose from the opponent. Brilliant. And, this, and, and the extension of this is to do all of the other scenarios, you know, to to say that well you've done the rock then you have to do the hand then you have yep. to do the um then you have to do the um copy yeah. the coding to save me some time no that's brilliant it's here here i have all the scenarios it it can be just like Michelle. the image that i have show before yeah we've got a question in the in the chat um oh, tommy's yeah. basically asking um why are you using your hand and in, opponent hand dot value is there a reason for using dot value in one place and not dot value in the other place uh, because um, we have set a uh, collection in, into the opponent hand so it's it's it return it return a uh, name and yeah. the value of this name is uh, paper so i have to add value inside of ah, it's because we're getting a collection of one item rather than one item yeah, yeah. So it's a collection rather than a item. An item. Then yes. one variables. Oh, yes. Yeah. And and with the uh, um, and on the uh, the hand, your yeah. hand, it just uses the, the, the same set functions on on hand. But if you see on the op opponent, I have a shuffle. So you see here, this is a collection. Yeah. So the way you set the variable is different. Yeah, and, and and there are kind of ways around. Essentially, it's a bit like having a spreadsheet with a, a series of rows in it, and you've chosen, let's say, the first, the, the top row or something. Um, it, you still yeah. have to tell it the column that you're interested in, even if there's only one column. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but um, I think that for the purposes of the audience, we will move on to data in the coming months. But we're kind of gradually creeping our way forwards to to working with amounts of data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, next session will be one of the collections. Uh, I think that'll yeah. be a good one. Yeah. So um, um, this my uh, this my demo, a little demo, just just show you um, with just some if statements and set collections, uh, set functions. You can do. Uh, a lot of logics into an app and uh, you can also add in some nice to have things like uh, uh, add some sound effects or uh, do uh, other uh, nice um, images to make it uh, more uh, fancier. But um, the logic is uh, do a lot of comp uh, uh, um, comparisons over here. And uh, and and as as Rory said, it you can you can approach this with many other ways, but um, my target is that after this session, uh, you can build your own uh, game, simple game, yourself. Yeah. Brilliant. So, um, well, thank you so much for that. I yeah. I always find it absolutely fascinating as to the different decisions that our developers make in order to make things as simple as we can so that children can be successful with this yeah because i i was thinking uh, it's not i cannot make it too complicated um also it's it's it must be simple so i was thinking what what kind of games you can build with power apps to to uh, to learn about it and um after uh, I, I saw i saw uh, robin and leo doing north and crosses uh, in second uh, session and, and i thought wow that's that was a very good session that i think oh i can i can build one by myself and so i was looking around and thinking what kind of uh mini apps of games you can you can build um in a simple way 
Yeah. So I uh, I found the paper rock and scissor is uh, simple enough to show it within uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> and, and you've done it in a really, you know, you've done it in a very straightforward way. Really, really interesting. Um, in the chat, I've put a link to all of the materials that you have um, that you've created. So yeah. I have literally done it right now. Yeah, I have, uh, so, so, I have um, a folder with images. Yeah. So uh, if, if Robin, Leo or other um, attendees will, would like to uh, try it by themselves, you can use yeah. those images. Yeah. Also, I have a text file with codings, so you can uh, take a look at it um, where you can put some logics into uh, into the, the images. And um, yeah, if they have any questions, um, there are also two, two apps, uh, yeah. a simple one and an advanced one like this one with sound yeah and, and over here you can see uh if i win draw a loss it's also some if statements and some counts countings and i can do restart and i start the game yeah. again yeah so um yeah I, I think you have enough um resources to to start trying it by yourself yeah and so ah, those yes. resources will end up going onto the web so that you'll be able to navigate to them. But right now, the link in the chat is the way in which you can get to the resources from today so that you can build the same app as uh, as Michelle has built for us. Thanks so much. I was really looking forward to this tonight to see. Um, to <laughs> yeah, see. I feel very excited also. So. <laughs> yeah, um, and we've got uh, we've got a bit of um, Power Platform royalty uh, on the line. We've got um, Donna's here. Uh, Donna Sarka. So I'm really pleased that she was able to to see what you've been um, what you've been doing and what we've been doing, which is brilliant. Um, uh, so what, what we're going to do now is we're going to do a wrap up and uh, maybe do a do a quick uh, chat of the of what we've learned today. Uh, and then that will be the end of the session. So I think what I'll do is I'll just share my screen, but only to put on a kind of um, only to put on the um, the the kind of power apps of big kids and little kids um, screen. So I but I as you know, uh, Michelle, I'm not the best with um, uh, this sort of uh, screen sharing and so on. So I'm just going to share my screen. And um, so finishing up. Today we've covered a good few things. Um, we saw a we saw the shuffle function that um, Peter demonstrated. We we also looked at the five minutes to wow um, uh, sign language app that uh, Beth created, even though she's never made an app before. We've seen like Michelle working at top speed. I think she might have been burning her keyboard at one point trying to build <laughs> um, trying to build rock, paper and scissors in a really, really interesting and down to earth way. We saw shuffle uh, nested if functions, beautiful images. I'm trying to think of all the little functions we, we used along the way. Um, but gradually we are advancing in our in our abilities um, on the Power Platform. So the final thing I'm going to do is just going to refer you back to the um, to the website so that you can just to remind you of the Content Explorer. So all you do is you click on Content Explorer. It won't work for today's session yet, but come the end of the week when I get the video from Emma, I'll put the video on. And then you, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to filter it on the project. You will see the project, which will be project number three, which will be um, rock, paper, scissors. And then you'll be able to grab all the different bits and pieces that you need to be successful with this. Emma, um, uh, uh, I want the final thing is to say that our next session will be on uh, on the the 14th of July, so that's four weeks away, but we'll be putting that onto Twitter and all the all the usual places. So um, all that remains for me to say is thank you so much for coming tonight. 
Um, there will be a place for parents and teachers and devs to, to collaborate with us. Um, we're gradually building that out so that we can have an amazing place for children to learn about Power Apps. Uh, Peter, have you got anything else to, to add? Well, one important thing is, how do we get to our website? If you Google for, or Bing, of course, if you Google or Bing for Power Apps for Kids, you'll yeah, find it, or you can just type in powerappsforkids.com and you'll get our website too. So and thank that's all you, sorry. That's all good. Thank you to all our presenters and thank you for all the parents coming with their children to learn about Power Apps. Um, Emma, would you like to close us out? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, Rory. Um, thank you to everyone who attended. I would like to apologise for the mishap in the beginning. I know some people joined another Power Apps meeting and it was the wrong link. So my mistake, really sorry for that. Um, and I think I got most of you onto this, this call anyway. Um, one quick thing before we wrap up today is that we have a reactor survey. We would love for your feedback on this session. It really helps us to build our schedule and our calendar and um, to, to change anything if, if we need to as well. So I think, yeah, Rory, you're displaying the link there. So aka.ms forward slash reactor forward slash survey. And you'll just need to pop in the event code at the top of that survey. So 7711. Um, and um, like Rory said, we will do a follow up on Meetup with the YouTube link to today's session. And the next session will be posted shortly, which will happen on the 14th of July, same time. So I think that's everything from my side. Thanks so much, Rory, and all of our brilliant speakers as well for today's session. Brilliant. Thanks, everyone. Uh, so we'll say goodbye. Enjoy your evenings uh, or whatever time of day it is with you. And we will see you again in four weeks time. But do keep your eye on um, Twitter and so on. We'll just be letting you know when the new material comes out. Thanks, everyone. OK, thank you. Bye bye. 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 Good night.